for body heat. <laughs> you think it gets cold here? This is tropical compared to the prairies. Here you see a guy with a little belly fat and a little back hair, and you're like, uh oh. See that same guy at West? You're like, fuck yeah. <laughs> Insulation, you want to lock that shit down. <laughs> I married a 300 pounder, it was like winning the jackpot. <laughs> then we moved to Montreal and I'm like, fuck, it's not that cold here. <laughs> so we got a divorce, <laughs> which worked fine until the Arctic freeze this winter. Then I'm like, maybe we should work things out. <laughs> I recently decided to get back into the dating scene, but I haven't been really single since I was like 17. I don't even know if the same pickup lines I used in high school still apply. Hey, do you want a blowjob under the bleachers? Might lose something at 33, I'm not sure. <laughs> Who are we kidding? That one works every time. <laughs> Puts me in trouble with parents, though. <laughs> actually worked out here tonight? <laughs> Secret to a happy marriage is date night at Yuck Yucks. <laughs> you guys are missing out, because you know what's awesome about dating in your 30s? <laughs> no, really, I'd love to know, because so far it's shit. <laughs> it's like trying to find something on the clearance rack at Sears. <laughs> All the good stuff, long gone. Oh, yeah. Only stuff left on the market's either been returned by its first owner, it's damaged, or its zipper won't stay up. <laughs> right now. He's really cute. He's tall. Potentially underage. Um, I don't actually want to know how old he is, so I just try to avoid taking him anywhere he might get asked for ID. <laughs> Not sure if it's a red flag. He was doing long division on the kitchen table last night. But I mean, any man who can whip out a protractor on request is obviously someone I want to get to know better. <laughs> and I do get a deal on the kids menu at most restaurants, so that's a perk. I mean, times are tight. <laughs> And even if, uh, you know, we have to spice things up a little, now instead of me wearing a schoolgirl outfit, he just comes over after class. <laughs> and even if you might not be legal yet or whatever, uh, he is already way better than the last guy I dated. Like, at first, that guy was perfect. Money, muscles, French. Near Montreal, I've got to date a French guy at least once, right? It's like buying the t-shirt. <laughs> even his three kids didn't freak me out. I just picked my favorite and didn't talk to the other two, which is I think how you're supposed to parent, right? <laughs> and it wasn't that hard not to talk to them because the kids didn't speak a word of fucking English. <laughs> like, not a word. And my French is pretty spectacular, so we had a lot of conversations where I'd be like, Est-ce que tu veux jouer avec moi? <laughs> and they'd be like, Aw, daddy's dating a retard. <laughs> Eventually, though, I had to let him go, and, and not because I, I couldn't communicate with his children. That actually worked out great. Turns out I fucking hate kids. <laughs> but I let him go because of two words. Indoor scarf. <laughs> like, I'm from the prairies, right? We wear scarves to prevent frostbite. But when it's a mauve silk pashmina, and he's wearing it sitting on the living room sofa drinking Perrier while the rest of us are in sweatpants chugging Bud Light, there's a problem. <laughs> So this Christmas, uh, he decides he wants to meet my family, and I'm like, I don't know, but he's like, it will be great, say parents, they love me. I apologize to any Franco's in the room for making him sound like Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> so he flies in at Christmas, uh, you know, family comes over, he walks downstairs to meet everyone, and I see in horror, he's wearing like a fashion scarf, like a scarfette. <laughs> that just happened to match his watch and his loafers. <laughs> Because much of old men, they know how to dress, right? These stylish devils. But the thing is, you need to know your audience if you're gonna show up somewhere looking like you're straight off a GQ cover shoot. And for the Win record, Winnipeg is not that audience. My redneck cousin's sitting there, wife beater, barbecue stain. He's got like three teeth, they're all afraid of each other. <laughs> Pulls me aside and he's like, uh, why is he wearing a scarf indoors? Is it cold? Not sure why my cousin's from the south in this story, but we'll go with it. Because <laughs> in Winnipeg, wearing an indoor scarf is like wearing indoor earmuffs, right? It just doesn't happen. 
So my mom starts cranking the heat every five minutes, thinking it must be freezing. We end up sitting in this awkward inferno of hell, the heat's so high. My mom insulted he won't take off his outdoor gear and stay a while, and my new date wondering why people in Winnipeg keep their houses so fucking hot. <laughs> It's always funny though, going back home, seeing my mom, the old house, it's like taking a step back in time. And not because of some sort of childhood nostalgia or whatever, it's because none of her shit's been updated since 1963. It's like I'm on an episode of Quantum Leap every time. <laughs> we had this one Quantum Leap lover here. We had this one wall growing up in the basement, and it was completely covered in mirrors. Like floor to ceiling, shiny, tacky as hell, mirrors. Like unless your weekend activities involve cocaine and orgies, <laughs> neither of which I think my mom was that into, <laughs> when she'd invite the ladies over for book club, right? Unless maybe she was, in which case, best book club ever. <laughs> but otherwise, there's no real reason to devote an entire wall to just mirrors, right? There's this new thing now called um, paint. <laughs> Put it on your wall, looks nice, and doesn't give off the impression to guess that you're running a sex club in the basement. <laughs> How about the rotary phone? Anyone have one of those puppies growing up? Oh, yeah. Anyone? Yeah, yeah. And then let me guess, your parents probably evolved with technology, and eventually you got a real phone. <laughs> Not my mom. She still got it. You know how many hours of my childhood were wasted going... <laughs> And then you'd space out for like half a second, but it was just long enough to make you forget what number you were at. <laughs> Sometimes even who you were calling. <laughs> so finally you just hang up, decide, fuck it, didn't need to talk to them anyways. <laughs> like I remember as a kid sometimes picking my friends based solely on their phone numbers. Like if someone had too many eights and nines, I'd have to pull them aside and say, listen Sally, you're great, but I mean, I got a rotary phone at home, it's just not gonna work out. <laughs> So armed with this information, you can imagine how well my mom would take the news when I tried to call her and tell her about my first camera phone. I remember calling her up and I'm like, Ma, it's a camera and it's a phone, isn't that cool? And she goes really quiet and she's like, wait, you have a camera inside your telephone? You can almost hear her mind blowing. And I'm like, yeah, you can take a picture and you can continue your conversation, it's so neat. And then the line goes dead. And I'm like, Ma? Hello? Silence. I think we're disconnected, so I'm about to hang up, wait for her to call back, maybe take a little nap or something, since it's gonna be at least another five minutes for her to dial my number on the rotary phone. When I hear this frantic whisper from the darkness, she says, you can see me? <laughs> and I'm like, pardon? <laughs> and she says, with your phone and your camera, you can see me? And in my head, I'm like, is this really happening? <laughs> like, did my mom really just reach Sarah Palin status of best statements ever? <laughs> but I'm trying to be patient. So I say, no, Ma, that's not how it works. <laughs> you can almost see her looking into the receiver of a rotary phone, wondering how I was achieving this magical feat. <laughs> and I say, you could almost see her, right? Because of course I couldn't actually see her because I'm not fucking magic. <laughs> And then she loses it. She says, but honey, I just got out of the shower and I didn't have time to grab a towel. I'm so embarrassed. And then she pauses and says, but how do I look? I just started this new diet. I think it's really working. <laughs> Guaranteed she's moving the phone to what she thinks is her good time. But I mean, she's pushing 70, right? So at this point, she'd be lucky to have a sign at all. It's really more of an oval type shape. <laughs> And by now I'm so tired from tech talk with Linda that I don't even have the energy to explain to her this isn't how technology fucking works. So finally I just say, yeah, Ma, you look great. Why don't you go Windex the mirrors? I gotta go find one of those cocaine book clubs to help me forget this conversation ever happened. Thanks very much, guys. <laughs>